if you want to build face recognition based attendance and security system in Flutter for both Android and iOS or you want to learn the use of face recognition and face detection models in Flutter with both images and the live camera footage, then welcome to this course. In this course, you will learn to integrate face detection and recognition models in Flutter for building smart Android and iOS applications. So during this course, we are going to build two different face detection and recognition applications in Flutter from scratch. So firstly, we are going to build a face detection and recognition application where user can register and recognize faces using images. So in that application, user will be able to choose or capture images in Flutter. And then we are going to pass those images to our face detection model to detect faces present in those images. And after that, we are going to crop detected faces and pass them to our face detection model to register and recognize them. And for registering those faces, we are going to use the local database of Flutter. And secondly, we are going to build a real-time face detection and recognition application. So in that application, user will be able to register and recognize faces using the live camera footage. And during this course, we are not going to use any paid service for performing face recognition and detection. But instead, we are going to use the popular machine learning models in a TensorFlow Lite format. And those models include the FaceNet model and mobile FaceNet model. And for performing face detection, we are going to use the powerful models of Google MLKit library. So after completing this course, you will be able to integrate face detection and face recognition models in Flutter with both images and videos. Similarly, you will be able to add face recognition based authentication in existing Flutter applications. Apart from that, you can build face recognition based security and attendance systems. And the course is recorded with the latest version of Flutter using the libraries which provide support for both Android and iOS. But one important question is who can take this course? So if you are a beginner Flutter developer or even an experienced Flutter professional, this course has something for you. So what are you waiting for? Join the course now and start building your own face recognition and detection based smart flutter applications. Hello and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we will learn that how a face recognition application works. So let's start. So a face recognition application can be divided into two main parts. The first part is face registration and the second part is face recognition. So in face registration, we register the faces so that we can recognize them later. And in face recognition, we recognize those registered faces. So just like the face unlock feature of your mobile device, firstly you register your face and after that you will unlock your device using that registered face. So the first part where you are scanning your face or registering it is called face registration and the second part where you are unlocking your device using that registered face is called face recognition. So firstly we are going to cover this face registration and see how this face registration works. So let's consider that we have this Bill Gates image and we want to register the face of Bill Gates. And in order to do that, firstly, we are going to pass this image to a face detection model. And a face detection model can detect that where in the image the face is present. So after passing this image to a face detection model, we can get the location of face and we can draw the rectangle around that face. So after getting the location of this face, we can also crop that face and we will get only the portion of image where the face is present. So after extracting this face, we are going to pass it to our face recognition model. And when we are going to pass it to this model, this model will gonna return the result and that result will be the embedding for that face. So what is this embedding? 
So this phase embedding is actually the numerical representation of phase generated by the phase recognition model. So in phase recognition, we generate and compare phase embedding for faces to determine that whether they belong to same person or not. So if for two face images, the embeddings are similar, then there are chances that they belong to a same person. And this embedding is actually a float array which contains the number. And again I am repeating that this embedding is actually the numerical representation of face image generated by face recognition model. So when we are going to pass that cropped face to our face recognition model, we are getting this embedding. And after getting this embedding, in order to register the face, we are going to show this dialog to the user. And here we will ask the user to enter the name for this particular face. So user will gonna enter the name Bill Gates here and after that he will gonna click on this register button. And when he will gonna click on it, we are going to register this face by storing this name that he will gonna enter here along with the embedding which is generated by the model. So we are going to store Bill Gates here inside this table and we will also store the embedding for this face here. And this whole process is called face registration. So the whole process of face registration can be divided into four major steps. And the first step is taking the image and passing it to a face detection model to detect the face. After that, based upon the results returned by the model, we will crop the faces and then we are going to pass those cropped faces to our face recognition model to generate face embedding. And after that, for registration of that face, we will ask the user to assign a name to it. And once user will gonna assign the name, we are going to store that name along with the embedding in the database. And this whole process is called face registration inside face recognition application. So hopefully you got the idea that how faces are registered inside our face recognition application. And after face registration, the second part is face recognition itself. So suppose that after registering the face of Bill Gates, now we want to recognize it inside our face recognition application. And for that purpose, we are taking a different image of Bill Gates. So after taking this image, again we are going to pass it to our face detection model. And this model will gonna return the location of face inside this image. And once we will get this location, we are going to crop this face so that we can pass it to our face recognition model. So after cropping this face, we are going to pass it to our face recognition model and our model will gonna generate the embedding for this face. And after getting the embedding, now the things are different in case of face recognition. As previously for registering the faces, after getting the embedding, we are taking the name from the user and storing it inside our database. But now we want to recognize that face. So for that purpose, after getting the embedding from the model, we are going to compare this embedding with the embeddings of our registered faces. So as inside our database, we got two registered faces. First one with the name Ronaldo and the second one with the name Bill Gates. So we are going to compare the embedding for this face with the embedding of these registered faces. And in actual, as these embeddings are a floating point arrays, so we are going to find the difference between these arrays. So after comparing this embedding with the embedding of both of registered faces, we will get the distance or the difference between them. So suppose that the distance between the embedding of this face and the embedding of Ronaldo face is 1.56 and the distance between the embedding of this face and the embedding of this Bill Gates registered face is 0.36 and as we can see the distance or the difference in case of this Bill Gates registered face is low so both of these embeddings are similar. So that will be our recognition because the embedding for this registered face is similar to the embedding of this face.
so we are going to assume that that is our recognition so we are going to assign the name bill gates to this face and after that based upon this data we are also going to show this name bill gate along with the rectangle on the image so that's how we are recognizing faces inside our face recognition application that we are generating the embedding for the face which user want to recognize and we will compare this embedding with the embedding of all the registered faces and where the distance or the difference between two embedding is minimum we are considering that that is our recognition so the whole process of face recognition can also be divided into four steps and here the first three steps are similar to the steps for face registration so the first step is taking the image and passing it to our face detection model to detect faces and after that based upon the results returned by the model we will crop the faces from the original image and after that we are going to pass those cropped faces to our face recognition model to generate face embeddings and after that for performing face recognition we will compare the embedding of the face with the embeddings of all registered faces and where the distance between two embedding is minimum that registered face will be our recognition so hopefully you got the idea that how the face recognition part of our face recognition application is working so now let's look at the whole process again so inside our face recognition application there are two main sections the first one is face registration and the second one is face recognition so in face registration we register the faces and to register the face we will take an image of face which we want to recognize and with the help of face detection model we detect and crop the face from that image after that we will pass this crop face to our face recognition model and this model will gonna return us the embedding for that face and this embedding is actually the numerical representation of this image and it is a floating point array and after getting the embedding if we want to register the face then we are going to show this dialog to the user where he will gonna enter the name and click on this register button and after clicking on this register button we are going to store this name and this embedding inside our database and a face will be registered and for recognizing that face we are going to take some other image and pass it to our face detection model and the model will going to detect the face and we are going to crop the face from that image after that we are going to pass it to our face recognition model again and we are getting the face embedding here but this time to recognize the face we are going to compare this embedding with the embedding of all the registered faces and where the distance between the embedding of this face and the embedding of registered face is minimum we will consider that registered face is our recognition and in our case it will be bill gates so after getting that recognition we are going to show it to the user that this registered face is of a bill gate or in this image bill gates is present so that is the whole process of a face recognition application or in other words that is how face recognition works hello guys hamza here I just want to let you know that this tutorial is just first few hours of my complete face recognition and detection course. The complete course is around 5 hours long and it includes all source code we write in this course. Every section has before and after source code so you can easily code along with me. Apart from that, you will get a certificate upon completion which you can add to your resume. So if you are interested I will put a link down below and I am offering a discount to first 100 students so if you are interested enroll now before it's too late now let's continue to the next lecture hello and welcome to this lecture in this lecture we will start building our first flutter application of this course and in this application we will learn to choose images from gallery or capture images using camera inside our flutter application 
but for now let's start building our application where user can choose an image from gallery or capture image using camera and display it inside the application so let's begin so the first step is creating a new flutter project so open your android studio and here click on this new flutter project now here choose flutter and click next now here you need to choose the project location and then you can choose the language for android and ios so we are using kotlin for android and for ios we are choosing swift similarly you need to type your project name here so i'm gonna use the name image picker flutter now click finish and our project will be created in a moment so now our Flutter project is created and this project is containing the default counter application code. So let's run this application inside an emulator and after that we are gonna make changes in this application code so that user can choose or capture images in Flutter. So I am going to install this application inside an emulator. So now the application is installed inside this emulator and that is the default counter application. So here you can see this button with the plus symbol. So when the user will gonna click on it, this count will gonna increase. So that is the default application and now we are gonna remove the code for this application and we are gonna add the code to choose or capture the images inside Flutter. So here inside this application, when you will scroll down, you will see this class my home page state so this is inside a stateful widget called my home page so here inside this class we need to remove this counter and this method increment counter so let's select it and remove it after that inside our build method we got the GUI related code so here you can see we got a scaffold and inside it we got this app bar and then in the body we have this column widget and inside this column widget we are displaying this text widget which is displaying this text you have pushed the button this many times and here in this simulator you can see this text similarly we got this text widget which is displaying this counter so let's remove both of these and after that remove this floating button as well which is being shown in the bottom right corner and after removing them press ctrl plus s and you can see now all of these things are gone and after that we are gonna add the gui for our image picker application so as we want to choose images from gallery or capture images using camera inside this application so in order to do that we firstly need a button so that when the user will gonna click on this button we can open the gallery and choose an image similarly when the user will gonna long click on this button we are gonna launch the camera so that user can capture an image and once user will gonna choose or capture the image we are gonna display that image inside our application so the GUI of our application will be an image widget and a button. So firstly let's add a button. So inside this column we are gonna add an elevated button. So you can see this elevated button here. So press enter. And now we need to specify the child of this button. And in the child we are gonna specify a text widget. And there we are gonna write the text that will be shown in that button. So we are gonna show the text choose or capture after that we need to specify this listener so there you can see this own press listener so here we can specify the action that will gonna happen when the user will gonna click on it so for now let's remove this own pressed and we are gonna add this empty method here so now when the user will gonna click on this button nothing will gonna happen but when you will gonna click ctrl plus s you can see this button in the center of screen and after adding the button the next thing is adding the image widget in which the image that user have selected or captured will be shown so above this elevated button we are gonna add our image widget so image and we are gonna use this file function 
and it will gonna return an image widget and that image widget will gonna show the image which is contained inside this file variable. As for now, we don't have an image file that we can display inside our application. But we can declare a file variable and in that file variable later the image that user will gonna choose or capture will be stored. So let's declare a file variable above. So we are gonna use file and after that let's name it underscore image. And now you can see this error because we need to add the import for this file class. So import this library dot dot io and the error will be gone. So after declaring this underscore image variable we can specify it here. So whatever image file this underscore image variable is containing will be shown inside our GUI. After that add a comma. And now you can see we are showing this elevated button and above that we are showing this image widget. And this image widget will gonna display the image which is stored inside this underscore image. But when the app will be opened for the first time, this underscore image variable will be null. So in that case we will see an error. So in order to avoid that, let's check this underscore image variable that if it is null or not. So if this variable is null, so it means that we cannot display the image at that point. And if this variable is not null, so it means that user have selected or captured an image and this variable is containing the path of that image. So in that case, we are gonna display this image widget. So before this image widget, let's check if this underscore image variable is null or not. So if this variable is not null, so only in that case, we are gonna display the image widget. Otherwise, we are gonna display an icon. So let's add an icon widget and inside it specify the icon. So we are gonna display the image icon for now. And after that you can choose the size of this icon. So let's select 150 for now. So now we have added this check that if this underscore image variable is not null then we are gonna display the image otherwise we are gonna display this image icon. And when you are gonna press control plus s you can see this image icon is being displayed above this button. So now the GUI of this application is completed because we added an image widget in which the image that user selected or captured will be shown and we got this elevated button and we want that when this button will be pressed the gallery will be opened and user can choose an image from gallery. Similarly we want when this button will be long pressed then the camera will be opened and user can capture an image using camera. But here you can see for now we have set this own press listener. But here we need to add another listener and that will be own long press. So just add it and after that add the braces for it. And that's it. And now inside this own press we are gonna write the code to choose images. And inside this own long press we are gonna write the code to launch the camera so that user can capture the image. But for now let's declare two methods. The first one named choose images and that method will be called once user will gonna click on this button. So I'm gonna declare two methods here. So below this underscore image let's declare a method called choose images. After that we are gonna declare a method called capture images. So after declaring both of these methods, let's call them. So we are gonna call this choose images method here inside this own press listener. So when the user will gonna click on this button, this choose images method will be called. And when he will gonna long click on it, this capture images method will be called. And that's it. And now inside these methods, we are gonna write the code to choose or capture the images in Flutter. And we are gonna do that inside our upcoming lectures. But for now, we have created the GUI of our application and we have created these methods where we are gonna add the code. So, see you in the next lectures. Welcome to this lecture. As previously, we created our new Flutter project and we created the GUI of our image picker application. And now we are gonna add the code to choose or capture the images inside Flutter. So in order to do that, we are gonna use a library called image picker. 
So to use this library inside our Flutter project, open your browser and go to a site called pub.dev. And this is the site from where you can get the official packages for Dart and Flutter. And the package we are gonna use is called Image Picker. So just type Image Picker here and press enter. And in the search result, you can see this first result image picker with the popularity 100%. So just click on it and the documentation page will be opened. And here we got the instructions to use this library inside our Flutter application. And the first instruction is installing it inside our project. So just click on this installing button. And here you will find this dependency. So just copy this image picker dependency and we need to paste it inside our pubspec.yaml file. So here open this pubspec.yaml and in the dependency section we are gonna paste this line. After that click on this pub get so that this library will be downloaded and added inside our flutter project. And there you can see in 3.3 seconds this library is downloaded and added inside our flutter project. After that open the documentation page again so that we can read the next instructions. So just click on this read me button and there you will find the instructions. So firstly we got the instructions for iOS. So for iOS we need to specify the reasons that why we want to access the gallery or camera. As by using this library we can do couple of different things. Like we can access the gallery, we can open the camera and also we can record the videos. So whatever feature we want to use for that purpose we need to specify the reason that why our application want to access the gallery or camera or microphone. So in order to specify these reasons, we need to add some key value pairs inside info.plist file of our iOS application. So just copy this key, this NS photo library usage description. After that open our project and go to iOS. And in iOS open runner and open this info.plist file. And there you can see couple of key string pairs. So here we need to add a similar key string pair. So firstly add a key and closing tag for key as well. And now in between paste the line that we copied. So here after specifying this key we need to add the string tags and in between these string tags we need to specify the reason that why we want to access the gallery. So let's remove this earlier text. And here you need to specify the reason that why your app want to access the gallery. Like you can specify the reason as your application will gonna help users to scan barcodes. So it need to access the gallery so that user can choose an image and pass it to the barcode scanner. Similarly you can specify some other reason as well. So after specifying the reason for gallery you need to specify the reason for using or accessing the camera and you need to do the same for microphone. So let's copy this key string pair and paste it below. After that let's correct the spacing and then we are gonna paste the key for accessing camera. So open the documentation page and there you can see this NS camera usage description. So just copy it. Then open the project again and in between the second key just paste the line and remove this space. So now here in between these tags you need to specify the reason that why your app want to access the camera. And these things will gonna help you when you are gonna publish your application on app store. And after doing that open the documentation page and the setup for iOS will be completed. And then we got the instructions for Android. And for Android we need to verify only one thing. And that is our minimum SDK version should be less than 21. So inside Android go to our app folder and open this build.gradle file. And there you can see this minimum SDK version. And for now it is being specified using this variable. So you need to make sure that your minimum SDK version is 21. So you can manually specify it as well. And that's it. So after doing that the setup for Android and iOS will be completed. And after that you can read the instructions and use this library in Flutter. 
So here you can see the first instruction is creating our image picker object. And after that, by using this image picker object, we can choose images from gallery. We can capture images using camera. Similarly, we can choose videos from gallery or capture videos using cameras as well. But for now, let's declare our image picker variable. So just copy this line and open our main dot dot file. And here above this underscore image variable, let's paste it. So now you can see this error. So just click on this image picker and press Alt plus Enter. So you can see we need to add the import for our image picker library. And now you can see the error is gone. So we are declaring our image picker object here and initializing it. And after that, we can use this underscore picker object and choose or capture the images. As for now, we want to choose images from gallery when the user will gonna click on this button. So here you can see we have set this own press listener and when the user will gonna click on it, we are calling this choose images method. So inside this method, we need to add the code. So we are gonna use this picker object and we are gonna choose images from gallery. And to do that, open the documentation page and you can see pick an image. So we need to copy this line and after that we need to paste it inside our choose images method. So I'm gonna paste it here and in this line we are using our underscore picker variable which is an object of type image picker and we are calling its method pick image and in this method you need to specify the source as for now we specified the source to gallery and if you want to capture the images then you can choose the source to camera as well but for now let's choose gallery and once this method will be called, the gallery will be opened. And once user will gonna choose an image, then this method will gonna return that image in the form of this X file variable. And you can see this await keyword is showing an error. And the reason is we need to make this method asynchronous because this thing will gonna take some time. So now when this method will be called, the gallery will be opened and when user will gonna choose an image from gallery, then we will get this X file variable. And after getting this X file object, we can get the path of image that user selected and we can initialize this underscore image variable. So here by using this image variable, which is of type X file, we can get the path. But before that, we need to verify that if this image variable is not null, so only in that case, we are gonna do that. So if is not null, so only in that case, we are gonna initialize our underscore image variable. So now if it is not null, then we are gonna get the path of file that user selected. So by using this path property, we can get the path and then we can create a new file object. And in the constructor, we are gonna specify the path. And after that, we can assign this file variable to our underscore image because this is the file variable which we are using inside our image widget. And that's it. So when this method will be called, using this picker.pickImage method, the gallery will be opened. And once user will gonna choose the image, we will get this X file variable. And here we are checking if this variable is not null, which means that user have selected an image. Then we are getting the path of that image and assigning it to our underscore image variable. And now this underscore image variable will not be null. So we need to update our GUI so that the image will be displayed here. And to do that, we just need to move this line inside a set state block. So just type set state here. And then inside it, we are gonna add this line. So after adding these braces, let's add a semicolon. And now let's paste the line inside it. And the reason is we want to update the GUI so that our image will be shown. So by moving this line inside a set state block, our application GUI will be updated because wherever this underscore image variable is being used, the changes will apply. And we are using it here inside our GUI. So now this underscore image will not be null and our image widget will be displayed. So now let's install the application inside the simulator again and see whether we are able to choose images inside Flutter or not. 
So I am going to install this application again. So just stop this main dot dot and install the application again. So now the application is installed again and when we are gonna click on this button you will see the gallery will be opened. So there you can see the emulator gallery is opened and here you can choose an image. So let's select this first image for now. And there you can see our selected image is being displayed here. So our application is working correctly and we are able to choose images from gallery inside this application. And we are doing that with the help of this image picker library. Similarly you can select some other image. So when we are gonna click on this choose button again and choose this Ronaldo image, you can see it is being displayed here. So this application is working quite well. And now the next step is capturing images using camera inside Android. Welcome to this lecture. As previously we have completed the part where we are able to choose images from gallery inside our Android application. And now the next thing is capturing images using camera inside this application. As you can see inside our application when this elevated button is clicked then we are calling this choose images method. But when this button will be long pressed which means that when we are gonna press this button for 3 or 4 seconds then this own long press method will be executed. And inside it we are calling this capture images method. So now inside this method we are gonna add the code to capture the images using camera. And to do that the setup is quite simple. We can use the same code that we got inside this choose images method and we can just specify this image source to camera. So let's copy this code and we are gonna paste this code inside this capture images method. And here we need to change this image source to camera. So now when this pick image method will be called, instead of gallery, the camera will be opened. And once user will gonna capture the image, we are gonna store that captured image inside this X file variable. And here this await is showing the error again, so we need to make this method asynchronous. And that's it. So now when this method will be executed, because of this pick image, the camera will be opened. And when the user will gonna capture the image, we are gonna get that captured image in the form of this X file variable. After that, we are gonna check if this image variable is not null. So in that case, we are gonna assign it to our underscore image variable. And we are doing that inside a set state block. So wherever this underscore image variable is being used, the changes will apply. And we are using it inside our GUI. So now this underscore image will not be null and our image widget will be displayed instead of this icon. So let's run this application again and then we are gonna test it. And there you can see our application is installed again. And when we are gonna click on this button for one or two seconds, you can see the camera is launched. And here let's capture the image. And there you can see our captured image is being displayed here. And in case of the simulator, we are getting the default camera preview. But when you are gonna run this application inside your real device, you are gonna see that your device camera will be opened and the image that you are gonna capture will be displayed inside our application. So now our application is working correctly and we are able to choose images from gallery or capture images using camera inside this application. And we are doing that with the help of this library called Image Picker. So now we have completed our application and in this application we are able to choose images from gallery or capture images using camera. So let's quickly review the process that how we have completed this application. So firstly we created a new Flutter project and in this project we created the GUI of this application and the GUI is containing two things. Firstly this elevated button with the text choose or capture 
and when the user will gonna click on it this own pressed will be called and here we are calling this choose images method and when he will gonna long press on this button this own long press will be executed and here we are calling this capture images method and above this elevated button we added this image widget and it will gonna display the image which is stored inside this underscore image variable and this is a variable of type file and by default it will be null but when the user will gonna choose or capture the image in that case this variable will not be null and this code will gonna display that image using this image widget so here we are checking if this underscore image variable is null or not so if it is null then in that case we are gonna display this image icon as you can see by default we are displaying this icon here but once this underscore image variable will not be null our image widget will be displayed and after creating the GUI we added a library called image picker inside our pubspec.yml file after that inside our main dot dot we created an object of type image picker and then inside this choose images and capture images method we are using this image picker object and we are choosing images from gallery or capturing them using camera so to choose them we are calling this pick image method and specifying the source to gallery and here we are getting this x file object and if this variable is not null which means that user have selected any image from gallery so in that case we are getting the path of that image and assigning it to our underscore image variable by creating this file object and we are doing that inside a set state block so that wherever this underscore image is being used the changes will apply and we are using it inside our GUI so now the chosen image will be displayed inside our application and same is the case with camera that when the user will gonna long press on it this capture images method will be called and inside it we are launching the camera using this pick image function and we are specifying the source to camera here and after that we are getting the captured image path and creating this file variable and then we are assigning it to our underscore image variable inside this set state block so now our captured image will be displayed inside our application as this section will be executed again so that's how we are choosing images from gallery or capturing them using camera inside our flutter application and the next step is using this chosen or captured image with our machine learning models and we are gonna do that inside our upcoming sections so see you in the next sections hello guys Hamza here I just want to let you know that this tutorial is just first few hours of my complete face recognition and detection course the complete course is around 5 hours long and it includes all source code we write in this course. Every section has before and after source code so you can easily code along with me. Apart from that you will get a certificate upon completion which you can add to your resume. So if you are interested I will put a link down below and I am offering a discount to first 100 students. So if you are interested enroll now before it's too late. Now let's continue to the next lecture. Welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to start building our first face recognition application. And in that application, we are going to perform face recognition with images. So let's start. So the first step of building this application is getting our starter application code from GitHub. So you need to open your browser and then you can type this URL. Or you can also get this application code from course resources. So in course resources, you can find this face recognition with images folder. And inside this folder, you can go to the starter folder and you will find this application code. So you can just simply open this code inside Android Studio. But we are going to import it from GitHub. So open your browser and type this URL. And once this repository page is open, click on the code button and copy this link. After that open your Android Studio and here click on this get project from version control. Now paste the link here and click clone and our project will be cloned in a moment. So now our code is imported successfully so let's firstly install this starter application inside an iOS simulator or inside an Android emulator 
so that we can see what does that shorter application contain and after that we are going to start integrating face recognition inside this application so i will install this application inside an ios simulator so now this starter application is installed inside the simulator so that is our starter application so on the first screen you can see this face recognition logo and then we got these two buttons so firstly we got this register button then this recognize button so as inside a facial recognition system there are two main parts the first part is registering faces and the second part is recognizing those registered faces so here if you want to register a new face in the application or in the system you will click on this register button and it will gonna take you to this screen and now here you can either choose images from gallery or capture them using camera so for choosing images from gallery you will click on this gallery button and it will gonna open simulator gallery for you and here you can select any image like we selected this image here and similarly if you are running it on a real android or ios device you can click on this camera button and it will gonna open the camera for you and then you can capture the image and the captured image will be displayed here so far now in the starter application we are just choosing or capturing images in flutter and we are not performing anything else till this point but later we are going to add the code that when the user will gonna select any image here or he will gonna capture the image we are going to detect the face present in the image and then we are going to show a dialog to the user and ask user to assign a name to that face and after assigning the name we will register that face inside our database and later user can recognize that face if he wants to so that is the thing which we are going to perform on this register screen similarly after registering the faces the next step is recognizing them so to recognize faces he will click on recognize button and we will take him to this screen and again here he can either choose images from gallery or capture them using camera but this time after choosing or capturing the images we are going to compare the face present in the image with the registered faces and we are going to show that whether that face is present inside our database or not or in other words we are going to perform face recognition on this screen so that is our starter application that here we got three screens the first one is a home screen and from here user can go to register or recognize screen and on register screen user can register faces and on recognize screen he can recognize faces using face recognition model so now after looking at the working of this starter application let's look at the code of this starter application so we are going to start by opening this pubspec.yml file and inside it we will see the dependency so for now you can see we got this image picker dependency and using this package we are choosing or capturing images inside our flutter application after that we got this image package and we are going to use that image package later inside this course when we want to get the faces from the original image or when we want to crop the faces from the original image so for now we got just these two dependencies after that you can expand this lib folder and there you can see we got four dot files so firstly let's look at this home screen dot dot file because this is the screen which will be visible when our application is first launched so this is this particular screen and inside this screen we can go to the build method and there we can look at the gui so there you can see in the gui we got this column widget and here firstly we are displaying this container inside which we are displaying this logo.png so because of this line of code this image is visible here after that we got two buttons so there you can see this first elevated button with the text register and then this second elevated button with the text recognize so when the user is clicking on this register button we are launching this registration screen and similarly when he will click on recognize we are launching this recognition screen so let's firstly open this registration screen so there you can see this registration screen dot dot so just open it and now inside it we have the code for choosing or capturing images inside flutter so here in the simulator we will also open this registration screen 
So now on this screen, let's look at the GUI first. So open our build method. So here when you will scroll down, you will find the build method here. And now in this build method, you can see we got a column widget. And then inside this column widget, we are checking that if this underscore image variable is null or not. So if this variable is not null, then we are going to display the image which user have selected or captured. Otherwise, we are displaying this logo.png. So that's why this logo is visible here. And after this logo.png, you can see these two buttons using which we are choosing or capturing images. So here when you will scroll down, you will find this row widget here. And in this row widget, we got these two card views. So in the first card view, we are displaying this image icon using which this icon is present here. And in the second card view, we are displaying that camera icon. And when the user is clicking on this first card view, this image from gallery method will be executed. And when he will click on the second card view, this image from camera method will be executed. And the code present inside these methods is similar to the code which we have covered inside our image picker application. So there you can see this image from gallery and image from camera method. So inside these methods, we are using that image picker library and we are calling this pick image method. And once user will gonna choose or capture the image, we are getting that image in the form of file and storing it inside this underscore image variable. And after that, we are calling this do face detection method and inside this method, for now, we do not have anything. But later, we are going to add the code to perform face detection and face recognition inside this method. But for now, here, when the user will gonna choose or capture the image, after getting the image, we are assigning it to this underscore image variable and now wherever this variable is being used, the changes will apply because we are doing that inside this set state block and we are using that underscore image variable here. So now this underscore image variable will not be null and our chosen or captured image will be visible on screen. So that's how we are choosing or capturing images inside the starter application with the help of image picker library. And we have built the same application inside our previous section where we learned to choose or capture images in Flutter. And we are doing the exact same thing inside our recognition screen. So here again we got this image picker and we are initializing it here. And after that we are choosing or capturing images inside these methods and displaying those images to the user on screen. So that is the code of this Rata application that we got the code for choosing or capturing images inside this Rata application. Welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to start the process of face registration inside our Flutter application. So previously, we have imported our application code and you have seen the working of this Rata application. Apart from that, we have looked the code of this Rata application. And now it's time to register and recognize faces inside this application. So there on the first screen of this application, you can see this register button. And when we are clicking on it, we are getting to this screen. And now here on this screen, user can choose or capture images. But once he will gonna choose or capture any image, the first step is we need to get that image and pass it to our face detection model. And then that model will gonna detect or locate the position of faces in that images. And after that we need to crop each face which is present in that image. And we need to show a dialog to the user so that user can assign a name to that face. And we can register that face inside our database. So the first step of face registration is to detect faces in that image. Or in other words, we need to perform face detection inside our application first. So for performing face detection inside our Flutter application, we are going to use a package called MLKit face detection. So open your browser and go to pub.dev. And here you can type face detection and press enter. And then in the search results, you will find this Google MLKit face detection. So this is the first package which is present here. So you can just click on it and it will gonna open the documentation page of this library. And after that you need to click on this installing button and then copy this dependency. So I will simply copy it 
and then you need to paste it inside your pubspec.yml file. So just paste it below this image. And after that you can click on this pubget so that the library will be downloaded and added inside our project. And there you can see it is done. So after adding this package we need to add one more package inside our application and then we can use this package for detecting faces inside our application. And that package is Google MLKit common. So we need to add that package along with this MLKit face detection library inside our project. So open your browser again and here in a new tab you can go to pub.dev and here you can type MLKit commons and press enter and there you can see this first result Google MLKit commons so click on it and after that go to the installing section. And here you can again simply copy this dependency and then open our application and here you can paste it below this MLKit face detection. Now again click on this pubget so that the library will be downloaded and added inside our project. So there you can see the library is downloaded again. So now after adding the dependency for this library, the next step is setting this library for Android and iOS. So open the documentation page of this Google MLKit face detection and here click on this read me section. And then you can scroll down and you will see the instructions for Android and iOS. So firstly you can see these requirements for iOS and after that we also got this section for Android. So we will cover both of these one by one. So firstly let's cover the iOS requirements. So for iOS the minimum deployment target of our application should be 12 and we should be using Xcode 13 or newer. Apart from that we should be using Swift 5 and lastly we need to set one setting inside our Xcode and that is we need to go inside our runner building settings excluded architecture and we need to set this ARMv7 there. So to do settings for iOS you can simply open our application and here on iOS module you can click on it and then select this open iOS module in Xcode and it will gonna open the iOS application inside Xcode and there we can verify these settings. So there you can see our module is opened in Xcode. So here you can click on this files icon and it will gonna show you the files of our project. After that you can click on runner and here you need to verify that your minimum deployment target should be 12. So for this starter application we have already set it to 12. After that you can click on this runner test and here you again need to verify that 12 is present. And then you can click on this runner here and then also verify that the minimum target is 12. And then you can repeat the same thing for the pod. So here you can click on this pod and verify that we got 12 here. And after verifying that our minimum iOS deployment target is 12. The next thing which we need to verify is that we are using Xcode 13 or newer. So here in Xcode you can simply click on this Xcode and then select this about Xcode. And there you can see I am using Xcode 14.2. And after verifying the Xcode version, the next thing is checking our Swift version. So to check Swift version, you can just open terminal and here you can execute this command Swift version. So press enter. And now here you can see my Swift version is 5.7.2. So I am using Swift 5. And now the final thing is we need to set this setting inside our Xcode. So we need to go to runner, building setting, excluded architecture and then we need to set ARMv7 there. So here in the Xcode I can click on runner and after that we can click on this build setting. And then here we can search for excluded architecture. So there you can see excluded architecture and for the starter application we have already set it to ARMv7 for debug, profile and release. And if you are using that library inside a new application then here you can click on this plus icon for debug profile and release and set it to ARMv7. And after verifying all of these things you can just simply open our application here and now you can click on this top main dot dot and install the application again on this iOS simulator 
to check that the library is successfully added inside our project or not. So here I will install the application inside the simulator again. So there you can see our application is installed inside this iOS simulator again, which means that everything is working perfectly for iOS. And if you are creating a new project and not using the starter application, then you may get an error while installing this application inside an iOS simulator. And you can resolve this error by simply opening the terminal here. And then you can go to our iOS folder. So you can type cd iOS and now in this iOS directory you can execute the command pod install and it will gonna install pod files for you. And after that you can install the application again in the simulator and it will gonna work perfectly for you. So now we have set up this library for iOS. So now let's look at the requirements or the setup for Android for using this face detection library. So here when you will scroll down you will find this Android section and here we only got these requirements. So our minimum SDK version should be 21 and our compile and target SDK versions should be 33. So what you can do is to open the application and here you can expand this Android folder. After that in the app you can open this build.gradle file and now here we need to set these things. So there you can see this compile SDK version so you can manually set it to 33. After that you can find min and target SDK versions here. So you can set this target SDK version to 33 and then you can set this minimum SDK version to 26. I know that there is mentioned that the version should be 21 or greater. But we are setting it to 26 here because later we need to perform face recognition inside this application using a library and that library requires a minimum SDK version 26 so that's why we are setting it here. So now after setting these things we can simply install this application inside an Android emulator and check that whether everything is working perfectly or not. So here in the AVD manager I can simply launch this android emulator and then I will install this application inside that android emulator. So here you can see our emulator is launched. So now let's select this pixel 7 here and install the application inside it. So there you can see our application is successfully installed inside this android emulator. So it means that the library is set up perfectly. And now we can use this library for performing face detection in Android or iOS in Flutter. So now after setting up the library for both Android and iOS, we can use this library for detecting faces in images. So to do that, open the documentation page of the library and there we will follow these steps. So here the first step is creating an instance of input image. So as when the user will gonna choose or capture any image on this screen, we need to pass that image to our face detection model. But we cannot pass that image directly, firstly we need to convert that image into this input image format and then we can pass that image to our face detection model and detect faces present in the image. So here inside our application code we need to convert that image into that input image format. So there you can see when the user will gonna choose or capture the images, the code present here will be executed and we are getting that chosen or captured image in the form of file. And that file is named underscore image. And after that we are calling this do face detection method. So now here firstly we need to convert this underscore image or this file to input image format. And to do that what we can do is to write some code here. So we can declare a variable of type input image and we can name it input image and after that using this input image class we can call its method from file and we can specify our underscore image here. So now when this line will be executed it will actually going to convert this underscore image into this input image format. So here we need to specify not null insertion because this cannot be null. So now this line will gonna convert our image into this input image format. And now we can pass this image to our face detection model. 
and to do that we need to look at the next step which is creating an instance of face detector so we need to declare and initialize this face detector variable and by using it we are going to detect faces in images so what you can do is to copy both of these lines and open our application and here in the init state you can simply paste them below this to do initialize face detector so there after pasting it you can click on this face detector options and then you can import this library so what we are actually doing here so firstly we are creating a face detector option object and then we are creating a face detector object so when we will create this face detector we are actually loading the face detection model of mlcat library and inside it we are passing this option so basically with the help of this options we are enabling or disabling certain features of face detection model and those features are mentioned in the constructor of this face detector option so there you can see we can specify these things here like if you want you can enable classification of the faces as well and by classification we mean that apart from detecting the location of the faces do we also need to detect that whether the eyes of that person face are opened or closed similarly we can also detect that face is serious or smiling so here we can also enable or disable that thing and then you can also enable landmark detection so by landmark we mean that do we also need to get the location of different facial landmarks like nose eyes cheeks mouth and so on and then we got this contour detection which is similar to the landmark but using landmark we get exact position or the points representing different landmarks and then you can also enable or disable face tracking so if you will enable it face detection model will try to assign a unique id to each face which is present in the image and then you can specify the minimum face size which should be detected so by default it is 0.1 but you can set any value between 0 and 1 here and then finally we got this variable performance mode so you can set this performance mode to fast if you are using face detection model with the live camera footage and if you are using it with images then you can use some other mode or images mode here and by using that mode our face detection model will gonna work more accurately so far now here in this constructor we will only set this performance mode so performance mode and then we will select this face detection mode and there you can see the option for this mode is accurate and fast so we will choose accurate mode here for now because we are using face detection model with images so we don't need to use the fast mode but when we are going to use face detection with live camera footage then we can use the fast mode here so now after declaring and initializing this face detector options we are passing it here and it will gonna initialize our face detector but as we need to use this face detector inside this do face detection method so we need to declare it outside of this init state so here we are going to declare our face detection variable so face detector and we will name it face detector after that we will add a let keyword here because we are going to initialize it inside this init state similarly you can remove this final form here so now by doing this we are declaring our face detector here and we are initializing it here and now we can pass our image to the face detector and get the location of each face which is present in the image and to do that you can open the documentation page of the library and there you can see the next section is processing image and here we are using the face detector dot process image method and we are passing our image in this input image format to this method and it will gonna pass that image to our face detection model and return us the list of faces here and then we are iterating this list of faces here and we can get the information about each face here so what you can do is to copy the code of this cell and open our application and here below this input image we can paste the code and now let's look at it so there you can see here we are calling this face detector dot process image method and passing our image 
which user have selected or captured from gallery or camera. So once this image will be passed to our face detection model, we will get this list of faces here. And in this list, for each face, we get a number of information. So here we are iterating this list. So for each face which is present in the image, this loop will be executed. And firstly, we can get the location of the face using this face dot bounding box. So it is actually returning the rectangle object, which is the location of the face. After that, we can get the information about the head of the person which is present in the image like the head is titled up and down by rotation x degrees and it is rotated to the right by rotation y degrees and so on. And we can also use these angles for some particular use case. But for now in this course we are only going to use the location of the face which is present in the image. But here you can notice that for each face we can also get the landmarks. And by landmark, we mean the position and the location of different facial things. Like we can get the location of left ear using this face dot landmarks and then specifying the landmark type here. So it will gonna return us a face landmark object. And then you can get the position using that object dot position property. Similarly, if you will remove this dot and add it again, you will check the landmarks that you can get the position of bottom mouth left cheek, left ear, left eye, left mouth, nose base, right cheek, right eye, right mouth and so on. So you can get the location or position of any of these landmarks. And then you can also get the smiling probability if you have enabled the classification. So this face dot smiling probability will gonna return it. And then you can also use it for particular use case. And finally you can get the tracking ID of the face if you want to. But for now, we are only interested in the location of the face. So we can simply remove all other code. And now here, for each face which is present in the image, we can get its location using this bounding box. And we can print it in the console to verify that our faces are being detected or not. So here in the console, we can simply print the message rect and then we can print that rectangle so bounding box dot to string and it will gonna print the location or the position of the rectangle so now after doing this when we are going to install or run the application again in this simulator and you are going to choose any image or capture it in the log cat or in the console you will be able to see this information printed based upon the faces present in the image so let's install this application again and check that our model is successfully detecting faces or not. So now our application is hard reloaded. So let's click on this register button and choose any image from gallery. So I will select this image where we got 